Hello friends, Tom Merritt here. Just got back from the old sword and laser post office and uh, all we got this week was a notice from the employment department that we had properly filed our paperwork. So, I uh, decided to try something new, even just in week three, something new. Uh, I'm gonna call it Off the Shelf. I just pulled three books, three hardback books, off of my own shelves uh, that I think are interesting, maybe you haven't heard of, or important to me, etc. Uh, and I'll show those to you this week, and then maybe we'll get some new review copies next week to show you. First one off the shelf is Great Science Fiction of the 20th Century, compiled by Robert Silverberg and Martin H. Greenberg. Uh, it is one of those cheap pressings, to be honest. Uh, not a remainder pressing, but reprint pressings. But it's got excellent stuff in it. And this, as a Christmas present when I was a kid, totally stoked my love of science fiction. Uh, the jacket painting is by Romus Mendola Limited. Might have to do some research to figure out who they are. Uh, but if you look through here, uh, you get, well, don't we have a table of contents for me? Come on, there we go, people. All right, uh, Arthur C. Clarke's Rescue Party, Ursula K. Le Guin's Winter King, James Blish's Common Time, Philip Jose's Farmers, The Shadow of Space, Robert Heinlein's All You Zombies, Mm -hmm. Inspiration for the song of the same name. Uh, that's just the first part. Robert Silverberg's Sundance, Ray Bradbury's Kaleidoscope, Kurt Vonnegut in a science fiction anthology with a story called Unready to Wear, uh, Friedrich Pohl's Day Million, Joanna Russ, When It Changed, Isaac Asimov's Bicentennial Man, inspiration for, for the movie. Uh, anyway, just Harlan Ellison's in here, Bob Shaw, Roger Zelazny. Uh, it's an excellent thing. And great science fiction of the 20th century, pretty bold, because if I remember right, this came out in 1987. So still had some 20th century to go at that point. Our second book is Douglas Adams' The Salmon of Doubt. Uh, I know Ian Colfer did an admirable attempt at a Last Hitchhiker's Guide book, but this came out shortly after Douglas Adams died, and it is... Uh, it is sentimental. It is, gosh, I wish I could get one last thing out of Douglas Adams. So it's a collection. It's a collection of unpublished things off of his laptop uh, in most cases. Uh, the jacket design, the, photog the photograph is courtesy of FPG Galaxy. Oh, you know what? I did <laughs> I put these on. Oh, there we go. Jacket photograph courtesy of FPG Galaxy and Stone. Uh, and the author photograph is by Jill Fermanovsky. There's the author photograph there. Uh, so that is a photograph of a salmon and a photograph of the universe superimposed upon each other. That's hence the two different credits there. Um, anyway, yes, uh, not much else to tell. It's a, you know, it is a collection of various bits and pieces, but just kind of nice to see. And then last, but certainly not least, J.R.R. Tolkien's The Children of Hurin, which is a Tolkien story. Now, it's not like a Silmarillion thing or a fragment thing. Uh, Christopher Tolkien, uh, his son, went through and took these notes and put them together into a book. Jacket illustration by Alan Lee there. Well, that was really glossy, isn't it? Uh, there are tales of Middle-earth from times long before the Lord of the Rings, and the story told in this book is set in the great country that lay beyond the Grey Havens in the West, lands where Treebeard once walked but that were drowned in the great cataclysm that ended the first age of the world. Uh, and again, it is it is a tale. It's got Morgoth in it. It's got Turin in it. Uh, so if you're a Tolkienian of any kind, you're going to enjoy it. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, brief look at just a few things off my own shelf. Uh, I'm betting we get some more stuff next week, and I'll be back with a normal mail haul. Uh, and of course, check out swordandlaser.com for lots of great recommendations on science fiction and fantasy to read. And uh, we are reading right now Station 11 by Emily St. John Mandel. See you over there.